All right, I'm doing a, a recording. Um, we just got done with Mike White on uh, episode four, um, and Matt, my brother, is about to join me in a quick five or ten minute recap. My brother is so good about giving me feedback, and um, uh, immediately afterwards, right? So we're, we we got it fresh in our mind. Uh, this is all very new for us. <laughs> Uh, I, even the microphone that I'm speaking into, um, I don't know, just, this whole thing is, uh, is, is funny and, uh, messy sometimes, but it's very real. So I've been, um, I'm going to start recording these little feedback sessions, um, to see how it went. Maybe, uh, people might call it the postmortem. Um, there you are. All right. So I, I am recording. I was just uh, waiting for you to come on and I was just talking about how much I value your feedback like immediately afterwards um, because it's fresh in our mind. And um, uh, you've been talking to me about a new microphone. And so I uh, I wanted to tell you that I wanted to ask you and how that went and how it sounded because I um, it's new. I was doing some testing Um and uh, so I, I think that went okay. But you were just going to say something about that. You were going to uh, plug or uh, or say something. Yeah. So I'll say I'll say two things. The microphone. That was one of the notes I made too. I hadn't seen the email that you sent about the microphone, but during the live broadcast that we had, I noticed. I was like, "Wow, my brother's voice sounds so good, so well. Like uh, just the audio quality. What I wrote down is very, very high audio quality. And then um, and then when you and then I went to check my email to come back on here for this recording. And I saw that, oh, you just bought the new the new um, microphone. Um, so anyway, microphone, the audio is it's... fantastic. Your distance from the mic was great. The sample that you sent on email had a little bit of reverb to it. And obviously, if you're too close to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah too close. Yeah, yeah. They're too close. Um, there's, there's filters that the pop stars use. Like I have one on one of my microphones that's a little, uh, it's a, they, they, I forgot what they call it. They call it, it's, um, but it's, it's yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. You kind of hook it up and do all that. And it was, uh, supposedly that makes it better to say like the P's and the puh, puh, like whenever, like, you know, you might like, so I'll just, I don't know, maybe there'd be a, a sponsor someday. There you um, go. so it was Mayano, M-A-O-N-O. And they, they do, they, they, what you just said, they call it a, uh, I think it's called a pop filter. Pop filter, that's what it's called. And they, uh, they said they strongly recommend using the pop filter for all vo vocal recording, which I did not use. And so I probably should use that. And it has to do with moisture, I guess, and the things that we can't really see. And Well, it has to do with uh, the way... Like, reduce you, the, the popping sound. The pop, yeah, pop, when pop. you say like pop, like a P, P is almost like, almost like a little bit of spit comes out of your mouth. That sort of like messes up the uh it, it gives a little bit of like uh, i don't know noise to the to the sound it's not as crisp yeah okay so um i don't do you have one of those you just have to hook it up or you gotta go buy one no it came with it oh you have it right I there that's did. right so you do yeah, it I, um, that's right you're just holding it up it just uh so i don't know i think you know the to show the right so it's here on the yep i hooked it up here to my my desk let me get rid of that hold on it's my phone. You can see my messy, my messy room. That's fantastic. Hey, Chuck though, D. I like it. It's Chuck D. It's Chuck D. I got Chuck, Chuck D. D a shout out. He's one of my, my spirit guides. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's hooked up here to my desk and this works out pretty well. Um, nice. And, um, and then, yeah, I, uh, I figured out that like six inches is probably six how much I should good. keep it away. And that the, the, uh, I know they don't do that as a marketing thing, but they say keep the logo where the M is of uh, Mayano is keep that where my my lips are or like right directly yep. because I guess this particular point where you speak into is where uh, it's supposed to whatever the, the the term is like if if I fl had flipped it around then it would have been not not as good I guess yeah every microphone is different so whatever they say to do that. Um, is good, but your audio quality is great. Your distance was good. You know, you good. put the pop filter on next time, it'll probably be even better, even a little more crisp. But I, I noticed that. Um, so that's good. The comment I was going to make at the very end, and it's good you're recording this in case you want to share the little, uh, the little blurb is uh, you and Mike both um, mentioned um, uh, high school, like 
30 plus years ago for me, 30, I don't know, 35 plus years, a while ago. Um, and, uh, and how well respected, um, uh, valedictorians are valedictorians are in high school. Right. And that was, that was me in our high school, which was great. And that's a really good athlete. Um, I was going to say athletic academic accomplishment, you know, at the time and at that age, right. It's more high school valedictorian is more of a broad, um, uh, broad understanding of a lot of different subjects, right. It's, it's, it's more wide than it is deep, right. But you're wide across your strong, you're strong across the, uh, the tops of a lot of subjects. Um, which is really good. What, what I see with you and Mike, which I think is absolutely brilliant. You're my brother. So I've been, we've been in touch over all this time, but Mike, I haven't seen in 40 years or whatever it's been in a long time. And, um, and you were both paying respect to the Val Victorian, um, accomplishment or achievement that I got in high school. I want to give you both some respect for, for being the Val Victorian of your industry. Cause you guys have niched down very hardcore, like for you, hospitality, for Mike, food service, dining, and and that type. I mean, Mike was speaking. You mentioned in the interview, like like a scientist or like a doctor. You know, he was speaking like that, and it was just so precise and so well worded. And you know that he was he was answering those questions and delivering it to to us and to our audience today. But he's had to answer these questions a lot of times over the years, and he's had to make his answers better and get smarter and really niche down into the food service area. So I really, I want to pay a lot of, a lot of respect and, um, and, uh, just, I'm impressed with, uh, with Mike and with what he's achieved and with what, what he's done. He downplays it a lot. Cause it's, we all downplay our own experience cause it's our own perspective, right? Like he's like, Oh yeah. You know, I was, I was dating my, my wife back then. And then I still worked there and I didn't really see myself working here, but he's made some major accomplishments major like legacy leaving impacts to the Yukon and to the and to the industry even being one of the first one of the first universities to start going green from a food service perspective that's a big deal that's very progressive back then and he's continued to hold that torch and go forward and always go a little bit more so what i think is yeah. great about that is always going to the next level right there's always more you're not like hey i finished school so I'm done reading books. I'm done learning, which happens, unfortunately, to a lot of the country, a lot of the country that is privileged enough to get education, whether it's up to high school or it's up to college, wherever it is. A lot of people, once they're out of the official education system, stop educating themselves. But you and hospitality and Mike and food service and, and the education world are constantly going right. You're always going to conferences, talking to people, learning more. Right. He had the people out from California. He's even back in the day, he was even getting educated by the pig farmer. Pig farmer comes in, learn about how do they process the food, right? His 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 um explanation of waste and how waste management is improved at Yukon over the last one to two decades is amazing. What a story. I don't know if that's captured anywhere, but that would be a fantastic little infographic or little story or whatever. Just as the success story of what Yukon's gone through. I think it's I was fascinated. I, I had no idea that the conversation was going to go there. You know, I, um, let me unpack that a minute. So the, you know, we, we all have, uh, I guess, labels that we can throw on it, right? You could say it's uh, street knowledge versus book knowledge. Uh, yeah. It's uh, a, uh, uh, a real life, education versus a formal or you know harvard or yale education right so i think what 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 kept going through my mind listening to mike was uh david and goliath book by malcolm gladwell yeah and there's a, a part of the there's a several chapters in there about education and i can't remember the the details but there is a, a valid victorian you know yeah. uh beyond top of her class, uh, graduated, you know, was on this path to become a, uh, I believe a, an attorney or a lawyer got into, uh, Harvard, um, and, uh, failed. Um, she, she was used to her entire life being number one in the class. She was, you know, always 
number one, and uh, was elevated to that point, came from a small town, right? And um, uh, when I say failed, you know what I mean. You know, yeah. I, we understand the term failure, but that's what I mean about labels, right? So yeah. uh, it was such a highly competitive and like whatever doggy dog, you know, kind of uh, atmosphere that's what she failed at. She was not interested or good mm. at that time, but she says at that, at being competitive is like cutthroat, but she was brilliant. And so over a period of time, you know, she ended up, uh, you know, dropping out of Harvard and then chose to go to a smaller college again for law or no, she became a scientist. Mm. She, she became a scientist in like, uh, invented something amazing that we all use today. I can't remember what it is, but um, it's in the book. And it's just, it's the same type of story of when I'm seeing Mike White, who I knew when I was 14, you know, and and I know uh, who, who I was when I was 14, and then 18, and then 22. Yeah. And even then throughout those years, to even think that it's possible to have a conversation on the internet together talking about Mike in particular. Right. And that journey, and he didn't even go to school for that. Yeah. Right. So he's speaking about biofuel fueling the, 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 with the, the, the discarded pepper cores. Yeah. Amazing. And, amazing. And, right. I was like, creating those like, relationships with uh, what quantum, bio power out of you know southington and now businesses in southington connecticut are are turning their lights on using peppercorns you know yeah, and using food literally. waste that used to be in a landfill or used to be causing issues now it's repurposed to be reused literally as yeah. energy it's just what a story right from and he's dead well, he, he's uh you could tell i mean he he could probably when we were talking earlier this week we we went we spoke for about an hour and he probably spoke about 50 minutes worth on his journey of self awareness yeah and amazing and and his wife jill um and you know he's got twins they're they're in college now and they're uh they were at Avery Point i think they're now at Yukon you know nice. so and the whole uh you know that that mentor that he mentioned you know Mike Beal yeah you know and Mike has his own journey. God, and it's, it, you know, he's right. passed away now, but uh, Mike said he's no longer with us, but you know, he has his own story and just imagine what that guy went through in his life to be able to have that uncomfortable conversation with Mike to say, yeah. you're screwing up, dude. And I have had countless mentors or bosses or supervisors. I shouldn't say countless, a very few of all of my supervisors and leaders in my life have had the courage to be able to sit me down and say, snap out of it. Yeah. And, and have given me a second chance. And I would love to have gotten more into Mike's story as far as what he must have seen something in Mike that made him not do what he wanted to do, which was to run away and not be a part of that conversation. Right. Yeah. God, it's, it, it was, Th that kind of stuff is um uh it, it's what kind of connects us all right that's why it's that emotional intelligence and him going get it a here he is talking like a, a scientist right yeah and this is me saying that right so he's talking like a science or scientist or a doctor and he did not go to school for that he went to school for industrial and organizational psychology yeah the non-clinical side of running a business yeah. and running a team and um uh and his first job was in restaurants and he's never left and when he was 15. And so, yeah. um, the, the, the theme that I am learning that's bro, I mean, it's becoming very natural, which is, th this is what connects us all. And, yeah. you know, these people who move, yeah, you know, like Evelyn and Yolanda and John St. Omer and, uh, everyone that we've been talking to, it's people they're, they're, people. Yeah, and there's uh, I, I'll I'll count, but I don't have a bachelor's degree. Mike does. Uh, I think Yolanda does. John St. Omar, I don't think he does. Evelyn doesn't, and then Evelyn's got her, you know, thousand people that report up to her, 
and I don't think they do. It's nothing against college, nothing against universities, but it's about this this life experience that they have, and they're they're putting that to practical use. And it's just yeah. that's that's where I think the beauty is. You know, it's just it's amazing and it's emotional. Yeah, and that's uh, so. A couple of things about what you just said is um, Gary Vaynerchuk always talks about like the number one superpower you have is self awareness, and like you said, Mike has that in spades. So you might want to reach back out to him and just say, hey, man, uh, my brother and I are really impressed with your self-awareness because that is that is um, it, it's it's huge. It's not it's not easy. It sounds like, oh, self-aware. I'm aware of myself. Right. But it takes it takes work, a lot of introspection to get there. And the better you know yourself, the better you can understand others and the world around you, the better you can make an impact and a legacy. And Mike is far down that path. He's like the stories that he shared about his ability to do better um, performance reviews and conversations with his team and his employees. I'm just super impressed. Like he's done so much work to make himself better and to make himself more aware of how he sees the world so he can better impact the person he's talking with or the people he's talking with in the organization that they're a part of. Like he knows how it's all interconnected, right? And he gets it. If he says, if he, if he lets someone cry and doesn't address it, he gets the ripple effect that that has on the team, on the organization, all that. So he knows, all right, we got to address it now. We got to take that minute. Let's talk about, you know, what did I, did something I say make you feel that way? Right. So it's just brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I was listening. Uh, but as you were, you're talking here, the, so I haven't shared this with you yet. And I've been sharing everything with Hospiamo, but I have shared this part. So the you, you know you you've seen the declaration of mutual reliance and and how that was written and these are all in the hospiamo's governance documents yeah so that they stay forever right and then and then the code of conduct is actually based on the the five domains of self uh, i mean of uh emotional intelligence here yeah so what i um what i did bro was you know the mentality of a swot analysis Mm -hmm. right that i've talked to you about right so i i became a in in business and like whatever running hotels buying hotels being a competitive yeah. ho hotel and manager and uh owner and all that um it's, it's swats are a uh misunderstood and also underused uh tactic but yeah. it, it's strength weakness opportunities and, and threats yeah um yeah. as you know and so I became good at it in business and actually buildings and markets, right? So I said, all right, if you're running a courtyard by Marriott hotel and, I, and I'm the general manager, I'm going to identify our strengths. Yeah. I'm going to really have some conversations with my team about our weaknesses, um, opportunities, and then threats. And so um, when I, let me think. So when I uh, left Pharos in 2016, one of the first things I did was I joined the Myers-Briggs you know, and, um, you know, and I, I've done that probably 12 different times, those different tests. And I'm always coming up as an uh, ENTJ. Okay. So That's funny. I'm, I'm ENFJ, bro. Okay. Yep. So we should do a, an episode just on that because um, now the E part, whenever I look at my uh, scale, the E has moved a little bit more towards the, the moderate, whereas before it was like, blah, like yeah. extrovert, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And so uh, all the other ones have pretty much stayed about where they are. I'm not really an extreme on either one of them, but I always come up as an ENTJ. So um, uh, when I was leaving Pharos, um, I spoke with a lot of the people that I that I worked with, you know, intimately, and I started asking them questions about like, um, how did you like working with me? And you know, and and over time they started being honest with me. And then over the last eight years. I've been asking those kind of same questions, right? And gone through my own uh, journey as you've been along there with me. So uh, I started my, so I, what I did was I started back then my own SWAT. Mm. So me, right? So these are like, and with the help of a, a therapist, right? So you know yep. that I went through some, uh, some really good talk, you know, therapy with a, a professional. Yep. And so um, this is all uh, included in the uh, Hospiamo's uh, documents. And um, it all started with 
a, a SWOT analysis of myself. Yep. Now, I um, ex very personal. The you know took years, but I put all this stuff together and I wrote up a little thing about what it means to me and and the company. So here's my strengths, my weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Right, and then right. A, a little and. Uh, I am go uh, you maybe you can coach me on this, but it's it's in our documents. It exists uh, and it's not going anywhere. Um, I did decide to just stop editing it, you know, and just because I'm sure I'm gonna do what's what I call just version two rather than yeah. edit edit this. And so uh, it's a lifelong journey. So um, yeah, man. Uh, so I'm gonna um, the the original plan for like um our leadership series with uh with younger people or, or whomever this workforce development that we're working yeah. on yeah uh, i if you remember i was going to start with just doing a swat to to have them work together on um in the hotel industry on one hotel yeah and they they were going to work together to go schedule something with the general manager and the marketing executive and yeah. and then with the town and you know uh the chamber of commerce and then they would come up with this SWOT analysis for one hotel. And we together would, that's valuable information. And we were going to sell that project, that product to the hotel owner or whomever that might be interested in yeah. it. Right. And then everyone that was a part of it, you know, uh, they would get those proceeds. Right. Yeah. So they, it's the whole idea of like owning something like they did something, yeah. they own it, they sell it, they get the, the proceeds. Um, and so I kind of the, the reason why I stopped it was that, and I'm, and you helped me with this. I, I I need to make sure that I am doing those things myself, right? So, yeah. my self awareness journey, we'll call it, is yeah. all here, and even identifying and admitting some of these weaknesses that I've had. You've heard, you've heard me say it. Look at number, uh, uh number unintentional intimidation, uh, d difficulty expressing thoughts and verbosity and over explanation. Yeah. Okay. So you, you and the world has experienced that in our podcast. Yeah. Right. In our, uh, live events, right. Because the, the one went from an hour and 40 minutes, right. That's, it has to do with me having difficulty expressing my thoughts and it has to do with over explaining those thoughts and being, which, people have labeled in my life, oh, Adam just likes to talk or yeah. Adam just, you know, is, uh, you know, long winded or whatever, or Adam just likes to be heard. And, you know, none of that stuff is true. And so when I got deeper, I realized that it's just a weakness of mine that I yeah. need to be aware of. Yeah. And you've obviously you've, you've helped me with that. And so, um, and then, uh, you know, the, the strengths are, uh, almost probably more difficult to come up with, uh, to, to define, what my strengths were and then um opportunities are the things that i'm not doing yeah that i could be doing and then the threats are the things that uh, could be coming around the corner that i need to keep an eye on yeah um and so uh yeah and then uh so because it's part of the hospiamo uh model here the and i i named it up here and that is so the question is how, how do you infuse self-awareness into a business model yeah. And that's the answer. I, the founder or whatever, you know, I have to do it myself. Lead by example. So yeah. Lead by example. And then, so anybody that becomes like a, say a member or an employee, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to go through their own journey and write this stuff down. And yeah. I, and our team will help them go through it. And yeah. it's a lifelong journey. So, you know, the, on the, on these live events, I don't want to, make these events as you know and we don't want to make this about hospiamo totally no. but the the it goes back to what you were saying about like what mike talking like a scientist um and and him attributing that to um you know him learning about himself essentially yep. right and and just letting go and giving his life to another person like jill and then falling in yep. love and then listening to that guy mike his mentor and then listening to the pig farmer to be like, Hey, what he wants something here. Why does he yeah. want it? Like, and what does that mean to our organization? And it's just fascinating, man. And, uh, if I don't know if this is too profound to say, but if, 
uh, one, it's probably because I see, I, I watch a lot of like criminal minds and the mentalist and serial killers and stuff. Yeah. And, and I would, I would think that on the opposite side of the people that, that hurt others, they cannot be self-aware. Right. I, I would think that they just, it's impossible for them to know. That's the, I guess, probably the definition of insanity, right? That That's not knowing what you're, you're doing and yeah. the repercussions and all that. And so, yeah. um, yeah, man, it, it's, a. Uh, and I'm glad I gave uh, Daniel Goleman uh, a little plug there. I didn't uh, plan on doing that because, uh, and I should have given Brownstone uh, a plug there for, uh, because he was the one that, that bought me that book back a long time ago because he. Um, but it's okay that you didn't because. Um, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Because just you, what you did really well in this one, bro, is you made it about Mike. All right. We're going to jump right in. Boom. You got Hospiamo up there. You got the you got the um, the LinkedIn. All the you know. Again, we had all the the we had all the promotional stuff on the side for right. free. We didn't have to talk about it, right? We didn't have to make a big deal. Nice. About it. We didn't have to do a big intro. You, know, like, you said that last week, and we we didn't record the feedback. But you said that last week, and you nailed it. Like just being able to do that by popping that up, it's huge. And you were and you jump right in. It was all about Mike from the beginning. It's and it's fascinating because as an as an audience, I can imagine anybody seeing this is gonna be like, wow, this guy Mike is smart. He's like, I didn't really know how much was involved with with dining services, but there's so much there. And his journey that he that he walked everybody through, he was very precise the way he spoke about his um his learnings and his lessons and all the stuff. It's um it's great. So it get, it gave me this is what's great about this program is we showcase talent who are really passionate about people in the service and hospitality industry and we're giving them we're giving we're giving them the opportunity to have the spotlight on them but it's not just them it's them and then their mentors and then the impact that the mentor had on them and then that they're having on thousands of people right it's a whole this whole big thing that happens right but we shine a spotlight on one little piece of it, one little piece of the ripple, right? I, and I, you, well, one little piece of the ripple. You're right. That's huge because the now uh, I'm trying to think. So I and I don't want to speak for Mike, um, but even being asked, and I should probably ask this to the other that are on there, even being asked to be recorded live about your life and to talk about your life and to talk about your, you know, education, your team, your, you know, I, I always ask, and I asked this to Mike, I said, is there anything that you want me to avoid? Like, do you, do yeah. you not want me to like, do you not want me to mention the university of Connecticut? I, I don't even know if we can, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if, there's anything that he signed that would say right. that you can't do stuff like this because the, I did in my career, there was, I was always uh, like these non-competes and you can't go out yeah. there to go. You might be promoting yourself instead of our company and all that. And so I understand all that. And so even being asked to come on here and then yeah. uh, he said, man, I, I, he, I don't know if he said this, but he said, I got some work to do to, to think about this, to make sure that, and so what he's there, that's beautiful. So John yeah. St. Omer said the same thing. Evelyn said the same thing. And Yolanda all said the same thing in that when they were asked, they have to go and spend time with themselves yeah. to really think about those things that have driven them to be able to get to the point where someone asks them to come onto a podcast to, to have a conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. so it's like, like, what do you do when you start writing your own memoirs? Like, where do yeah. you start? And it could start with something like that. And like John St. Omer wants to be a motivational speaker. He wants to, you know, he has a, he has a, an amazing point of view, right? And he's been sick. He's been, you know, working. He has a, uh, he's an immigrant from Jamaica. He has had a life of billions of not only stories, but just adversity and overcoming them. And, and, and his, th there's no one more that I think emits more sunshine in my life, you know, besides my wife, family, kids and, and everybody, but yeah, outside there that he emits just sunshine. And yeah. it's, um, 
and going through uh, what he has. And so he's got a great story to tell. And so it's, it's all kind of connected where um, if he wants that, then he is actively currently, and he already has been going through, you know, kind of like an outline yeah, to say, story, yeah, how have I even gotten here to be able yeah. to even think about being a motivational speaker? Do people want to hear from me? Who knows? Oh, this is why they want to hear from me. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think that this live event series, this podcast, whatever we call it, it's, it's allowing them yeah. to even go through the mental journey that I think is necessary for them to be like, because I have often felt that way talking with you on here and also with others, but even off air. Yeah. And I'll have something pop in my head and be like, I did not even remember doing that. Yeah. And I did it. And wow, I, I'm really proud about that. Let me write that down. Yeah. Because I went through that. You know what I mean? Like it, and yeah. it just like, it connects it. I think so. I think, and so on, on that topic, I think another way we can improve this because it's getting better every week, which is really cool. And this is a, uh, a simple one, which again, all these people are doing their homework, right? So if you ask them in advance, you know, um, who are the mentors that I'm going to ask you this question about your mentor, right? What what is your what is your answer going to be like? Who are the people in your answer? Um, is there one person, two people, three people? Because I would like to have a uh, a picture of them with their name and their uh -huh. role or something like flash up on the screen. Since you're using this this PowerPoint deck approach, which is great, it gives people something visual to look at in addition to the talking faces. I think it'd be fantastic to have the mentors. Their their image comes up with their LinkedIn profile, whatever. I don't know what. But their so like when, when he was explaining his conversation with Mike, his yeah, mentor, he if he had a Mike, photo of him. Yeah, a picture of Mike comes up yeah. and people see. But like just to respect Mike's legacy, that the the Mike mentor, um, to respect his yeah. legacy, you know, th that's that that pays great homage and and honor um, to his memorial because he's not alive anymore, right? So that'd be fantastic for his family even. Just to, yeah. just to see that. It's like when you did that on LinkedIn, you you challenge everybody, hey, recognize an important mentor or manager that you've had in your career, right? And I, I shouted out to a woman who hired me over at Bose because she did great stuff. And she's like, whoa, this is really cool. She was excited she got recognized, right? So it's great to recognize. What's her name? Amy, what Amy Beck. I put it on LinkedIn. Amy Beck. Did, I, I think I missed that. Maybe I'll, I'll forward that out and I'll just yeah, give her a shout out. Yeah, you can take a look. She's, uh, she's a hot ticket um, um nice. she works at a different company now but yeah she was um really 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 good manager the best that i had you know at that time um but it's really good to recognize um the people the other word i wrote down as we were doing our debrief is um and as you were talking about it is uh mentor moments that might be something that you want to dissect because we you talk about who the mentor is right but then what you get into with each person, which is really important, is what were the moments that they became your mentor, right? Like that moment that he described when he got called in because he was screwing around a little bit, taking advantage of the yeah. right? That was, a, that was like a, a moment, not only a mentorship moment, but it was a, it was a turning point in his life, Yeah. right? And to, and to like, that's what great movies do, right? They, they like zoom into these moments, like, wow, when that happened, that like shifted the traject the trajectory of my career or that, that logs some stuff in he's like wow this person believes in me i'm i'm better than how i'm behaving i'm going to change my behavior and move in this direction now so he shifted his behavior which put him on this path to become the amazing person he is today if he stayed in the other path he wouldn't have made as big of an impact to as many people's lives Think about all the people he feeds. I mean, you get this because you're a hospitality. I don't think about this all the time, but that person, Mike's role, he's influencing millions of students over years. Like a lot of students go to UConn every year, multiply that like times like, I don't know, times four, of like, but every class that comes in, he's impacting all these people's lives. And if you drill into it, it's like, how important is food in your life? Well, food's really important in your life. Well, guess what? There's an executive director of food services at UConn. All the students who come through that university for the past 20 years, you know, plus years he's been working there, you know, have all been impacted by some of the decisions he's making. You know, 
right? You're talking about like the green stuff, which affects, you know, earth and society and all that stuff. The impact are all the individuals, like people overeating, all the education he does about, hey, only take it if you're going to eat it. Like all the education he's, that he does for people to reduce waste also helps people be more conscious about what they're eating. So he has like this massive ripple effect that he does on all the students across the entire university. That's a lot of people, the impact that he has there, right? And he was impacted by people himself that gave, either gave him an opportunity or had a conversation. And Yeah, it's that yeah. word impact. So impact's a big word. Mentor is a big word that you have in here. Um, but what was great also about the Mike this interview is, is when, you, when you talk about these Mike was great at answering the questions in story form, hmm. like really good. Like, the, and, and he's like, I don't know how often he's been interviewed, but he's a really good person to interview because of the way he is, the way he answers the questions. Right. Like you, know, he, he, you know who he reminded me of? Is, uh, see it happening. He reminded me of uh, Brownstone. Uh, Does Brownstone that answer, is... like, talk like that too? Yes, he he yeah. um, he's very precise, and it's almost like he, before he starts talking, he's got a story in his mind. He's going to take you from beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. that that's what the audience wants to hear because the audience may be like, oh, I don't really care about hospitality, I don't care about food service. This sounds boring, but when they hear Mike tell the story, oh yeah, and I was screwing around a little bit, taking advantage of my my uh, my role there that I had because I rose up the ranks as a, as a coordinator in student service, food service. People are like, oh yeah, I screwed around a little in college too. I can relate to that, right? And then all of a sudden they connect in and they're like, oh, and then someone pulled them aside and said, hey, you know what? You can go a different direction. And he, and he acted based on that. Oh yeah, I've had that happen to me too, right? People can relate to his story because he told it in a story. If he just- what a said it differently it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have appealed so we're, we're making this more people oriented and more real for the audience um as as well right because not everyone you interview is maybe as good as mike in in their ability to tell a story about their story you, you know what he also did really well and um we're gonna somehow try to create a mechanism for this but it seemed like he also had like a time uh, like a stopwatch. Yes. When he stopped speaking and his, I could read his body language on there when I knew he was done speaking and he made a, a conscious. And then I just kind of flowed into the next thing. I didn't, yeah. I didn't have to be, you know, anxious about cutting him off or yep. uh, it, it, he, uh, it, it, I mean, who knew I, uh, I, Very if stupid. I, uh, if I communicate with Mike, it's, you know, text or, you know, LinkedIn or keeping in touch and, you know, there's not a lot of like interpersonal. We're not in the same room a lot. Right. So yeah. Um, he uh, yeah, that's actually something that I, I will follow up and ask him about because that's uh, it has to be learned. You know, I've not well, learned maybe, that. Yeah, I've not learned how to do that. Yeah. Maybe he maybe he learned he wasn't good at it as he became more self-aware and then he got good at it. Or maybe he was good at it and he just stayed good at it. Right. I don't know. But yeah, you, yeah. you do learn it. You, you learn all this stuff. Right. I think yeah, all I the think... emotional intelligence stuff is learned from parents, life, self-awareness. I mean, it's all. Yeah. It's you know, like when, when I watch uh, those, uh, I told you I watch uh, Lex Fridman a lot. Yeah. On, uh, on his part. <laughs> I love it. I mean, he's got like three and a half hour uh, episodes on there. And sometimes I'll turn it on, you know, when I'm falling asleep or something like that, or like during a lunch break and, um, and keep it on. But they also do clips. You know, and yeah. so, you know, you know, the thought that goes on probably more often than not, regardless, you know, regardless of the topic, it, it's that it's the, he asks a question and the person answers it. And yeah. some of them go on for a very long time. Yeah. Some of them don't. And, uh, I think that's maybe what a long form interview is for, but, um, it seems like there's a cadence, like an unspoken cadence that, and I wonder if there's some sort of like light or, you know, something that we can't see as viewers to be like, Hey, finish up here. Like almost like your Elmo thing. Um, like if you're like, we learned on uh, Toastmasters, right? Like yeah. the, the red light, like you're, you're getting to a, be a minute 
you yeah. know, you're almost done. You know, we maybe there's a way that we can in, incorporate that because not everybody is going to be able to do that um, or know to do that. Right. So the other thing that I think went really well, and this is um, it was just you and me. Yeah. And Mike, it was more intimate. And yeah. not not that I don't want Derek or Dave to be on there, which I do. I think that's great. Um, the uh, uh, but maybe there's a way that we can you know continue that on regard even if we do have four people on there just to yeah. maintain that intimacy a little bit more because that was that made me feel like really good, like yeah. I felt uh, at ease. Um, and I don't think it was just this new microphone. <laughs> Uh, but I felt more at ease with this one. It was, it probably had more to do with Mike than it did with anything else. It would just, it felt very intimate and, yeah. um, uh, fascinating. Yeah. It was fascinating. And I, I'm yeah. glad I moved. I did it naturally when, when I, when I joined, cause when I joined, it put me in the middle and when we were pre prepping, I moved Mike to the middle and I'm really glad I did that because. You oh, and yeah. Mike were talking together. I was on the side, and that's what I wanted it to be. I didn't want me to be in the middle and you and Mike talking around me. You know what I mean? So people saw you and Mike having a conversation and me being over to the side. I wasn't nice. small. It's huge. It it's huge. You know. Well, you you uh you changed that using one of these custom things? No, no, I didn't do. I didn't. All I did was drag and drop, bro. Like right now, I can drag me over to the to the side. See how I just flipped us? I I didn't even know we could do that. Yeah, so there you go. There's oh, nice. There. Okay. So you can drag. So when you add people in, you can drag them around if you want to. Yeah. Okay. So you can move. You know what I mean? So that that's important. Um, By the way, did I uh, did I tell you about these uh, custom ones that I made? You, you so, showed me the thing. I don't even know where they are. You said they're in the, oh, in the banner section. No, no, yeah. uh, no. I uh, I didn't tell you about this. So last last week you said there's a way to create a uh, custom uh f formats or custom layouts well there's and private so, chat for everyone in the studio i didn't even see that before so right now i have one here and i named this uh sign language interpreter because there's somebody that i'm talking to about um she's deaf she's in the the, the sign language world yeah uh, and she supports and advocates advocates oh, for, made, for those made one with, with me smaller that's awesome bro yeah so that that's the custom layout called five guests with sign language interpreter and media okay really? and then and this one is called custom five guests which we would all be on the bottom with media up here so if i added that right it would be up top yeah and then this one here is uh five guests watching uh i call it a reaction so I can put a video over here and we're all looking at it. Yeah. There are five people where, you know, maybe we're watching something funny or um, something that has a story or somebody's graduation or who knows. And then there's some other ones here, but I, I tried it out and I, um, uh, I think that we can change this when we're in the middle of it, but I don't know how to like put, if you're the sign language interpreter, all I don't know how to make you a, intro, a real time. Like if this is recording. These are all changes that are a live audience would see right oh, now. Oh, that's right. Real yeah, that's time. okay. Yeah, I forgot we were recording. Sh no, shout out to uh, to StreamYard.com. StreamYard. <laughs> no, this is that's that's awesome, bro. And that's uh, the way the way my marketing coach uh, does it is is he he puts a lot of per well, it's like you have Hospiamo up there permanent. He puts a lot of that permanent stuff up around the border, and then he keeps all the people like in the middle um you know what i mean so yeah, he leaves, i, I want to change that because i he leaves the border of like an inch all the way around the whole board and he and he puts his stuff in that border what do you mean so oh so like he keeps his stuff in there permanently just like you kept pa uh, pa a hospiamo up there like if you wanted to have contact adam on the bottom he would oh, have yeah. his stuff he would have that all there and he would move our faces up a little bit so that was always in the bottom and it never covered anything. Oh, uh, I think I know how to do that from those custom layouts. Can and so I would, I would make a yeah. custom layout here. Yeah. And then you just then you the, squeeze us into the middle and then, and then, and then you do your thing. Yeah. So that's, so that's all what I did line. here. So that this is a, I made this, uh, let me change it. So 
if it's you and me talking being recorded, I I created this in Canva. So it's a it's a transparent PNG photo. Nice. And it's with this. And so I can hide it or add to it. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so but but it it's not so good if we're down or like if we're all the like bottom. It's all the way here you can't it looks that sucks yeah that's why you oh that's why you yeah you do all that but yeah you're you're getting better with this every week bro which is great so this is awesome yeah why well, i i started with this i put this up <laughs> i was like oh no that's not gonna work <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this i was like hey that looks beautiful oh wait a minute that's not gonna that's not what that's for <laughs> well if you change the layout you could do that right you could have people on the side or something yeah I yeah i gotta figure that out but it's uh um, you know honestly it's uh i'm I'm getting pretty good at StreamYard. I'm, I've, I've been practicing a lot on Canva. Um, that's okay. That, that's a lot of trial and error. I'm us, been using a lot of Adobe stuff, um, uh, using the same kind of logos and things like that. The attorney that, I, that we'll be speaking with, um, she's advising me on that uh, Hospiama might need a different logo because when this was created, um, I sent out a contest to 99 designs. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like it was like 50 people that, that joined. Yeah. It was like, whatever it is, if somebody wins, they get $250 and then I get a logo yeah. and you get all those things. And so it was a lot of interaction, but there's some legal, uh, like they, they own it or something. No, I don't think they do. I went back and I looked at all the the contracts, and it doesn't say they do. But it's it's kind of like the same thing as uh, the the Hospiama website. It, it's through a Wix, yeah, template. Yeah. And I I don't know. There's a whole legal world there that says I may not own it, right? I might not own it, uh, depending on whatever the the statute is or what state yeah. you're in. I don't know. It's a whole world. Um, but that's why lawyers get get paid. Yeah. <laughs> so right. it's do. just a topic and it's interesting so um yeah bro all right we'll uh we'll we'll finish cool. up here yeah we'll thanks for the up. recap and Good for the job. first time i'm going to uh i'll publish this uh re recording into our I, I created a playlist on the youtube site um nice. and it's more it's uh just it, i think i called it intimate and messy <laughs> because it is it's this is what we're doing i'm putting a lot of personal stuff on there just even the, testing a mic and uh so that if if somebody wants to see like um somebody did ask this they're like are you saying that i could have like a podcast or something I'm like i didn't even think it was possible and then my brother like pushed me into the deep end and i'm like oh i guess we can have it you know right. so <laughs> right. um and it's uh and so like you re keep reminding me document yeah. Right. Document don't create. That's what Gary Vaynerchuk says. Document don't create. So I'm doing a lot of documenting and um, about one out of every five people is comfortable being recorded just in a regular conversation. Yeah. And, but I asked them for obviously for permission. Um, but I'm trying to encourage them to, you know, not worry about their background. Like I'm not yeah. like I am, but I am forcing myself not to be. Yep. Right. So that they can be like, oh, he's just in a room. He's a regular person. You know, they're um, maybe down the line. I, I, I probably should think about that. But <laughs> for, for right now, getting started. Yeah. You know, perfect. you've been preaching that to me forever by getting started. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Just exactly. get it started. I got that on my wall somewhere, too. You don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. Love it. You. I th I remember being a general manager when you first told me that. I can't remember what we were talking about. I was a GM at a hotel, so it's got to yeah. be about 20 years ago. It's a long time. Um, yeah, I heard that first from Mike Littman, who I haven't uh, connected with in a long time. I should reach out to him. He was a, a motivational yeah. author, a personal growth author down in New York City area, uh, an entrepreneur. And uh, and I, 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 was that one, man. I was one of his students for a little while. Um, learning about some entrepreneurship and things. And he always said that he was all about stop thinking and just do it. And when we had our accountability calls each week, he would, the, the worst thing you could do is say you were going to do something and then come back the next week and have the same thing that you were going to do that week. He's like, you mean you didn't do it? You said you were going to do it. You didn't do it. And he's like, I don't want any carryover. 
you say you're going to do something, you do it, and then come back with what you learned from it and how you're going to do something differently. Don't say you're doing the same thing because you didn't get to it last week. He's like, that's not that's acceptable. Real. That was that, the worst that, thing that you could that you could do on that call, and no one wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to admit they didn't do their action items that they were committed to, and they and they were carrying them over into the next week. That was like, that was worse. I had a, a a coach like that um, when I was with Hersha. They it was it was before the recession, so they they were uh, uh, and really doing a good job investing in us, the the, the leaders of the organization, and uh, they hired an executive coach who's oh I'm still in touch with. He's an awesome guy. Um, and he was just as uh, uh, serious about holding us accountable. Like, yeah, don't tell me that you did it. Show it to me. Yeah, because if you if I'm gonna know if you're lying, and if you're lying, you're lying to yourself. You're not lying to me. Yeah. So just show it to me. And I was like, all right, fine. I didn't do it. And he's like, not again. I don't want to have this conversation again. Yeah. All right. And I'm in front of like 15 people because we're all part yeah. of the same group. And yeah, I'm like, exactly. Yeah. So that's a, like you said, accountability call. That's huge. It's and it gets you very clear on your commitment to yourself and it makes you treat your commitment seriously because you're like, oh, I'm not only going to commit to these three items because these are the three most important items. And then I'm going to prioritize my time to make sure I do them. You're not just going to say, oh, well, like Lucy, Lucy Goosey, I'll just commit to these three things. You're not going <laughs> to be that way. You're going to be like, you're going to be rocked, locked in on, uh, on what you're committing to. So you're going to be a lot more self-aware of the commitment process and what you're committing to instead of just, you know, I love it so much. And I should mention his name is Mike. His name is Mike Aquilino and he owns his own executive coaching program. And so, um, I, it was like the month before the COVID pandemic. So it was like probably February or March of 2020. Um, and his executive coaching that I received was in 2007, I think. Wow. So if you think about it, it was before the, the initial recession Yep. when, when I met him and then I w went on in my uh, career and so did everybody else. And then there's another major impact moment of, of COVID and the pandemic. Yep. And I was like, man, I need him. And I had, I pretty sure I signed a contract with him. I said, I let's do this. It's a six month program and we're doing this. Yep. And then the bottom dropped out of the industry and I called him. I said, I, do not want to make this phone call, but man, I don't know where my meal is coming from next week, yeah. you know, or I, I, you know, I'm, you know, our entire industry. And he was like, don't even worry about it. You keep me in mind. So uh, shout out to Mike. And I, I, you know, I was reminded on that just like we are regularly. I will reach out to Mike to reconnect with him because I, I wonder how he's doing, but yeah, man, uh, maybe we should do a topic on that, that accountability. That's serious, man. Accountability that's, is a good one. Evelyn also mentioned the same thing and that's yeah. what people uh, respected about her because she was like, why does the, uh, the gift shop look like this? Come on, man, get to it. You know, exactly. you said you're going to get to it last week, get to it. And they exactly. like that. They, 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 people want to be held accountable for their responsibilities. Yeah. And so it yeah, helps a lot with prioritizing people's time and their focus, their energy. Um, and then that's the results, right? There's just, a, there's a lot more efficiency in the workplace with uh, making impactful uh, changes when you're accountable for doing the right thing. You know, the, another benefit to this follow-up, and we can keep it shorter later on in life, but another benefit is talking about this stuff that we don't need to be talking about on the live event for me. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I can, you know, talk philo philosophical type stuff or whatever, share the yeah. the business planning and, and your business and how we're all connected. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that does help. This, absolutely helps because the the call after the call i guess you call yeah. or the post-mortem yeah. or whatever allows that not only for constructive feedback and get improving but it does it's almost like a, a drain you know like or a filter maybe and, and yeah. it, it allows uh the stuff that really the viewers don't give a shit about you know it's yeah. like they might but i mean it's not the topic it's not about mike and so let's focus on mike for this event and yep. then you and I can talk through some of the things that went right, went wrong, yep. Yep. make better, and uh, and also talk about just the, the messy stuff maybe a yeah, little bit more. Exactly. Yeah, Save the yeah, messy didn't. stuff for outside for the after the call one. Yeah. Okay. So I say in honor of this new microphone. Thank you. Thank you. All Peace. right, bro. 
All right. We're good. End recording. I love you. End recording. Love you too. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.